Okay, <clears throat> number two, I attended the Northwest Florida Water Management Surface Water or Swim Meeting in East Point on April 20th. Commissioner Jones also attended. Commissioner Jones and I sat with the Executive Director of the Water Management District, Mr. Brett Seifert, and had time to discuss issues with him. I said at the meeting that the county would like the district to focus on projects that would improve water quality around East Point. The purpose of this refocus would be to try to improve the water quality so that any near shore oyster reefs that are currently getting some fresh water but are closed due to water quality could be open for oyster harvesting in the future. The district has traditionally focused on hydrological projects in Tate's Hell Forest, which we cannot see any demonstrable effect on the water quality in the Bay or the River. So we've asked them to try and look at East Point. Uh, the, you know, there, wasn't a, there was no vote there, so at least we gave them the, the idea that that's what we'd like to see happen and hopefully uh, there will be some projects coming out of that. I will mention just uh, for the benefit of the public, there were two other presentations that I thought were of interest. One, Mr. George Wilson, formerly with several environmental groups, asked for support for an acquisition of some 40,000 acres of riverfront property representing 80 miles of riverfront shoreline in counties north of Franklin County. <coughs> His group has put in an application to Florida Forever for the acquisition of this land which was previously owned by the Neal Timber Company and has recently been sold to another <coughs> timber management company. So that's a big acquisition and I'm sure it will be in competition uh, for consideration of funds with the acquisition of the eastern tract in Franklin County. So there's these two big tracts of land that could have great impact on us that I, I don't have any idea how they will be funded. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. The mm -hmm. They have a lot of studies, but has anybody ever studied them taking fresh water and putting nutrients adding the nutrients and putting it in No, sir. No, I mean, the, the only closest thing I can think of, and maybe not what you're mentioning, is that, you know, large sewage treatment plants uh, in various locations do what's called deep water injection, where the effluent doesn't meet water quality standards to be put in the river, so they shove it down that way down to the aquifer, you know, several thousand feet. No, I ain't talking about okay. that. I'm talking about taking fresh water and Taking, find out what the natural nutrients is and, and pumping in the beef, some kind of. It's like dri driving a well up above the <clears throat> railroad trussle, a big wells, and, and pumping the water down and let it run down the river to fresh yeah. water and get in the bay. Yeah. Well, I think there would be a, I, I don't think your, your regulatory agency would allow that because they, they know the fresh water in the aquifer is limited and they're using it for human consumption. <laughs> right, I think that's what the answer is going to be. But, you know, we can try to ask around that. But the second one is uh, Dr. Uh, Mays from, and associates from Gulf County put in a passionate plea to the district that they pursue installing floodgates on the west side of Lake Wimico to control water flowing down the Gulf County Canal into St. Joe Bay. Dr. Mays said the water quality in St. Joe Bay is changing because of additional sediments in the Apache River that he believes are being pushed into St. Joe Bay during high river events. And then during low water events, he says salt water from St. Joe Bay is flowing into Lake Wimico. So he asked uh, for that to be considered. Uh, there was no action on either item, but I just want to bring those to your attention. Uh, all right, we've done item number three already. Item number four, which sort of relates to item number three, Algar Point Road update. Because of the above mentioned change by the state in letting go of the very consultants who had helped Frank County write the $355 million PW, I believe that PW is now going to take longer to get approved. I have asked Commissioner Sanders to revisit the issue of paving the one lane section of Algar Drive. I've asked Clay Kennedy to get a current quote from Roberts and Roberts, who we currently have in a contract, and for around $20,000, that section of the road could be paved with one layer of asphalt. I think it'll be nine to 12 months before a contractor is in place working on their repairs, as we cannot even begin to apply to DEP until FEMA authorizes the funds. So Commissioner Sanders could use some of her, re or her paving funds to pave that one section. And considering that, that I think we're into a long term negotiation I, I want to I just ask you all whether it's something we should consume, pursue the traffic lights are working very well but it's been so dry down there that the dust is really being an issue by the by the residents and there's a washboarding effect going on down there it's just we can't grade the road it's just so hard that I'm, I'm thinking that asphalt surface 12 feet wide and do that 1,000 foot section there and just try and stabilize it uh, until we get a permanent answer and leave the lights in place oh leave lights in place absolutely and, and pave it only, the $20,000 cost was, Clay was unsure of how wide I wanted to pave or that we should have it paved. So he gave it, a, he, he was thinking we'd pave it as wide as possible, which would be like 18 feet wide. But if you do that, then it's going to look like it's a two lane road and you could create problems. So we would cut it down to probably 12 feet wide because you're not building trailers down there. And so if we cut it down some, I think the price would be below $20,000. 
but I don't have a I don't have a revised bid. Does this road have to be taken up before they do the permanent repair? I'm sure it would be. Yes, sir. So you're throwing twenty thousand dollars away. I know. They won't get it back. To <laughs> well, it's possible, FEMA. We, it's possible that we would get reimbursed, like the traffic lights. We feel this is a, this is an ongoing cost. It's possible we could put it in the reimbursement, but I don't know. I mean, it's going to be a, a if you ain't gonna have no consultants to do these PWs, you probably ain't gonna get nothing. Yeah, I don't know. How far is that stretch of road? It's eleven hundred feet. Eleven hundred feet. Eleven hundred feet of dirt road. Mm -hmm. But it has, uh, you know, during the summer it has you know a thousand cars a day driving down. Yeah. Where are they all going? They're going to beach access points. They're going to rental houses. There's 500. Uh, I can give you from my from my hazard mitigation project uh, application. I had uh, Ms. Rhonda Skipper give me some numbers. There are 767 houses in the area around the bank property. 760 houses. And so if you have just two traffic, two cars per day driving, that's 1,400 trips per day on that road. Well, let me ask you this. If you pay that, you don't think the speeds are increased? They certainly might. But now the only good news is, you, I mean, you they got your traffic lights. You got there, a traffic light and stop, so you gonna have to go from zero to whatever speed you can get up to, and then you got a sharp curve there getting onto Chip Morrison. Uh, so you gonna have to slow down to make that curve. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I, I agree with you that 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 traffic speed might be an issue. But we've had two residents with houses right there complain about the dust. Uh, and it's pretty overwhelming. Uh, well, we didn't tear the road up. Mother Nature tore the road up. I understand, but I, but I'm, tr you know, I mean, it's certainly y'all's discretion. But I, I understand the logic, and I can see the value of putting some asphalt down there, just because it may be. It, I, mean, I don't want to give you the bad. It might be a year. I don't know how long it's going to be before we get a contractor down there. Okay. What do you I do? mean, I understand what you're saying. I'm just looking at. You yeah, know. it's it's throwing. Yeah, I agree. It's twenty thousand dollars that we might not get back. They need it, though. Well, I mean, I'll six and one. You got people in the audience here. I don't know what they want to say. Nah. He may not want to say anything. I know. <laughs> State your name for the record. Uh, I'm Eddie Sosby. I'm uh, president <laughs> of the Alligator Point St. Teresa Association, and and everything that. Uh, that Mr. Allen just spoke to is, is fact. I mean, we've got a dust problem. We've got a board. The road is washboarding, and the road uh, the road crews are trying their best to grade it down the best they can but it just you know two days after they scrape it that that washboard comes back uh, it's just a tough situation and i understand the predicament and i and i fully understand the, the logic of uh, hating to put money into something and then have to tear it up to make permanent repairs but i do ask that you favorably consider this have you looked at putting any milled asphalt or anything like that on there now? Well, I tell you what, and I could give you the quotes. The milled asphalt, this is the difference. You, uh, uh, Roberts and Roberts recommended, you know, we, we gave, we asked for their advice on how much asphalt. An inch of new asphalt was like $18,980. They recommend four inches of milled asphalt, though, because you need more milled asphalt to bond and everything. And by the time you get that, the price is $13,000. Well, okay. for $5,000 difference, put the new asphalt down, okay. was, was my opinion. Okay. So I, I don't know if you want to consider. Well, you need to get some. You need a motion and a vote. Yeah, a motion vote. It's, 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 you want to do it by motion, or is that that's part of my payment? Yeah, yeah. Today. But I, I just want to. If you're if you're okay with it, then we're going to proceed. Well, I may not be today, but I may be tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, quick. That's what I was kind of okay. looking for. Right. 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 The commissioner of that district will take care of it. Okay. 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 I'm asking question though. You know, since this is a temp temporary fix, they got that old. They got a, it's a, something that looks like a rock to see, but it, it's a pavement. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. They see, showed it to us. I don't mind using the asphalt on it, Mr. No, and I know what material you're talking about. We see it, the, the association stuff and all. Yeah. But I don't mind. We're going to have, we got Roberts and Roberts in here. Yeah. You know, we could go ahead and tack on to that. Mm -hmm. um, but it. I don't mind going ahead and, and paving this, but I just want to make sure that we got out everything taken care of because it's like the chairman said, when you put that asphalt down there, they're going to have a tendency to go a little bit faster than what they are going now. So we're going to have to have that monitored to make sure we don't have any accidents down there. Yeah, and what, what my concern was is that you're trying to get to the beach access. Is that 
probably is not the people that live there. It's people, probably people that's coming down there mm -hmm. to go to the beach. No, which really don't care about the community and how the community's best interest at heart. They're just trying to get to the beach. I understand. And three or four beers in the system will go with it. Right. Well, there you go. They're going to be hauling butt down a paved road. Right. But and if somebody else coming, and if they don't pay attention to them traffic lights, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at liability issues here also. Well, the traffic lights are working pretty well. I don't know there are people who are busting through them. Maybe, maybe they're yeah. all. Uh, the traffic lights are excellent. They're working excellent. They're doing their job, and they're doing it people very well. People obeying them? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. They're following. Okay. I mean, every now and then you see somebody go rogue on you and run around. Well, that's, that concerns me with the paved road and people going rogue yeah. on you. That's exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. The point, the point that Mr. <laughs> Pierce made about the, you know, from the point of the traffic light accelerating and then decelerating to make a right-hand turn, you've got to make a hard 90-degree turn going in there. So, I mean, really, you, you could ramp up speed, but you've got to, you've got to slow down to make a 90 degree turn. I might have to make a trip down there. Yes, sir. Please do. Come I, mean, I didn't know y'all had a boat stores yeah, down at the Marine and all. I ain't never been past old KOA. That's far as I've ever been. Yeah. Oh. Well, you need to come see two of the traffic lights in the county, you know. It's, it's, I, it's, I, it's, I ain't it's, been it's, down it's, there since the road washed out either, so I yes. didn't need to make a trip down there. Yes. The last time I went down, I said I wouldn't go back without the law, so I might get them taken. <laughs> Well, we can. We, I bet we can work that out too. But there, there are a good number of permanent residents beyond that point. I mean, yeah, that's what they told me. And, and the I marina and, and the business going into the marina and uh, you know that, that's an you know that's a problem here too. The boat boat traffic going in and out. It, yeah. it's, that's a good. There's a lot of traffic in in addition to those that come to use the beach at the public access points. Okay. Okay, all right. I'll defer with the commissioner from the district. Uh, all right, so that's that. All right, we did item number four. Uh, Alan Pfeiffer. Uh, hold, I used on, to hold on, hold on, hold on. Anybody recognize Alan Pfeiffer? Oh, you, you, he was I didn't know you apologize. were up there, but go ahead, Alan. I appreciate it. Uh, just, I, I know I, Cheryl hates to use her, her paving money. I wanted to throw I out maybe an alternative. Using well, if unnecessarily. Uh, and I. There's, I used to do a lot of construction roads, and what we would do is we'd put uh, Portland cement uh, on top of uh, some type of aggregate for temporary roads, usually lasted a year or two. Uh, Portland Cement Association has a specification for doing temporary roads that might be a lot cheaper. I didn't know if the engineer wanted to make a phone call. Uh, it's something the county can do uh, without using a uh, paving company. Yeah, well, you don't use a paving company. We, we don't. We use it's a mix. It's called soil cement. And, soil cement. Yeah, and we and bind it. And I don't know in this particular location whether it'll work or not. I mean, that's something we can look at. Uh, but, but it's cheaper than that, though. Well, it can be. It can be. The question is how much cement you put in. Yeah, yeah. You got to bind. You got to bind it. You got. You basically use a tiller. And you tow up the top six inches. And I'm not sure we have six inches there. We might run some granite rock down there. I, I just thought I'd throw it out. It's it's at least half the cost. Okay. Um, and you know it it lasts quite a bit longer oh. than you might think. Oh yeah, no, no. It's not, I'm just worried that we don't have enough depth there to properly blend it in because we we just put a little bit of asphalt on top of all that rock, concrete, every, I mean, the lime rocks on that concrete down there, everything. Yeah. But we well, pay I'll, half I'll, and you I'll, pay half. And you've got the road department going down there twice a week grading right. it. Right. That's a cost, right. a big cost right there. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll deal with that. Okay. We're spending about that much. We're going to give a fuck that much. We're done going that way. <laughs> it's been so dry. Oh. Go ahead, Al. Okay. Right. Uh, item number four. <coughs> Inform the board that I'm in the final stage of completing the HMG application to acquire the bank property. I'm waiting for a final state review before I submit it, and pending approval for the state, it, it, I intend to submit it by the end of this week. At this time, the state staff is still favorable to the acquisition. In a related issue to this section of the property, FEMA has rewritten part of the PW that was to clean up the debris in front of the property and to fix the small damage at the west end of Alligator Drive and Chip Morrison. At this time, FEMA has approved $27,000 for debris removal in front of the old KOA, but has yet to approve any funds to fix Chip Morrison. Chip Morrison has not necessarily been denied, but FEMA chose to break the PW in different components. This might be because they want to consolidate and identify costs associated with the road in front of the bank property and separate out costs from other sections. So I, I'm, I'm looking at this in the most positive light, that this is the move that they're doing on our behalf to justify the acquisition of the bank property, you know, that the state's going to pay for. It. Okay. And I, that might be why they're doing it. Um, number five, inform the board that there will be a workshop. <clears throat> on May 16th for applicants who are interested in applying to the county for inclusion in the first phase of the MYIP. This workshop opens the application period, which at this time will run for 60 days or until July 15th. 
If the board or the RAC receives comments that applicants are not going to be able to meet the July 15th deadline, it is entirely at the discretion of the board to extend the application period. The workshop is for applicants and the board does not have to attend. So that's uh, yes. Mr. Peel, would you, you said MYIP, would you pronounce that and yeah. by name for the public? Multi-year implementation, the multi-year impl implementation plan. And it's yeah. the treasury document that's required before you get any restore money. <coughs> okay, so that is where we're headed on that, and I'll come back to that in, in just a second. Uh, but let me finish item number six, Triumph update. And this was based on what should have happened yesterday afternoon, so commissioners who have more access to the fact than I do you, you know, I might correct me. But uh, as of Monday morning when I wrote this, which is yesterday, this there appeared to be consensus to get a bill, a Triumph bill approved. And I understand these are the key points. Grants will be allowed to the tourism entities for advertising and promoting tourism and grants to promote workforce and infrastructure on behalf of all the eight counties. I don't know if that's, if I'm reading into it, that, that means somebody like Florida's Great Northwest is going to be able to get money because they're going to say they do, they're doing all eight counties. I'm not really sure if there's a hidden agenda on that item, so I'm a little concerned with that. Uh, and what, 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 uh, how they, what are they talking about doing? Advertising, promoting tourism, grants promote workforce or infrastructure. Which one of those categories would, would Great Northwest be after? I, they could be after the tourism. They could be saying they're a regional. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm at this supposition. They could, they could We're be. We're not saying, even a member. I don't but they're going to, but they're going to say, I know. I don't want to get no money on our behalf. We're not even a member of their organization. Uh, well, it just as before, they tried to create a regional, you know. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm just aware of that. Okay. All right. The role, number two, though, is more important to the county. The role of the county commissions has changed. The county commissions will now recommend projects for their counties, but the county, county commission recommendation will only be a factor for approval by the Triumph Board, not a requirement. The okay. definition of infrastructure was removed. This means the Triumph Board will determine what the definition is. And lastly, the Triumph Board will be expanded to seven members with the two additional members coming from the four smallest counties. The four smallest counties are Wilcoa, Franklin, and Gulf, which we all know, and then Bay County. Bay is not small to compare to us, but the legislation says four smallest counties. And this part I'm not sure of because I didn't get confirmation. I think the appointments for these two new members of the Triumph Board will, will be made by mutual consent of the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House. But I'm not sure of that because the first five are appointed by the Governor. Well, but yeah, but Bay County already has a representative. I'm aware, but so they they're going to get two. Well, they just said that the Triumph will be four, they'll be the four smallest counties will get together and get two more members. Oh, the four counties will get together. I, I guess. Well, the Senate and the Speaker of the House will do it on our behalf. I don't well, know. But three counties is not represented. That's I, why we first not. get two members yeah. out of these three counties. Now they're saying we're going to get four members from the, two members from the four, four smallest. Yeah. So that Bay County might end up with two, two they might. They might. And we still ain't going to have none. Oh, have one. I, I, from somewhere. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I understand. I'm just being adversarial, Aaron. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, two, two other items. Uh, one is uh, is I just want to uh, remind the, the board. All right, we last time we talked about trying to get some jobs into uh, Franklin County and the airport, and this is the kind of competition we're up against. This came out of the 805 um, magazine, which may not have a large circulation, but Santa Rosa County is in there promoting this county, and and some of the criteria that I just thought were interesting in their promotion is more than 36 percent of the county's population has an associate's degree or higher. Local schools are among the best in the state of Florida, and the local business incentives can provide up to $800 per position per year. So Santa Rosa County is out there marking themselves with stronger qualifications than we have. And that's the challenge that we have as a small county. Here you have Santa Rosa saying they have a $31,000, 31,000 military retirees able to go to work, that 36% of those have an AA degree or higher, and that there is opportunity for $800 per position in local business incentives. So we, there's a a lot of business and economic encouragement in other places, and it's hard for us to compete with those kind of those kind of numbers. So that's where you see the triumph funds going. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, lay that out there. Yes. The last item, Commissioner, and I, I throw this out for consideration since we are going to be opening up the application process for our triumph fund. The Alligator Point Road is a county road. We've done the best we can to get the state to take it. They won't take it. We need to do, I feel like we need to do what we can to protect that road so that in future hurricanes, the risk and the exposure of the county is as small as possible. And one of the components that I would like the board to consider is doing a shoreline protection along that basically mile section of road from the west end of Chip Morrison 
beyond, and I'm moving east now, the west end of Chip Morrison, all of Chip Morrison, all in front of the uh, KOA, all in front of the 1,000 feet of road that we've damaged, and another 1,000 feet eastward. So it ends up being about a mile section of land there that we look at doing what I'm calling shoreline protection, which would involve putting some sand up there and creating an artificial beach to protect the road so that the next hurricane we have a beach that it beats up and not the road. If we do this in the right compact, the right arrangement, it's possible that the state of Florida would match 50% of the costs. So 50% of the money is taken is solved. The other 50% I would like you all to consider using some of your restore money so that we provide the first beach out there paid for through restore money and DEP money that the legislature allocates. I've checked with Mike Dombrowski. We are eligible for that. Uh, our permit is still active. Uh, there's some things that have to be done, but um, there, is a, there is a way to get a beach out there. Now, that's the good news, as far as I'm concerned, that we can provide a beach out there without any cost to anybody. The bad news is, and it's a reality that we have to face, is that somebody, there has to be a funding source to maintain that beach. And that is the, that's the rub. That, you know, I believe that the people who utilize that beach and that road particularly need to pay for that maintenance. But something I haven't discussed with you all publicly, it's my first time saying it. Uh, I, I want you all to think about it. We have a couple of months to make an application. Uh, but if you all want to use restore money to put a, a structure out there, a beach structure out there to protect that road, now's our window between May 15th and July 15th. They're a little bit further if you want to extend it. Now you're talking along in front of the old KOA uh, right on down? Yes, all the way down, about a mile section. Be now, renewed, man. That's, when you that's yes. what he's talking about. Yes. Well, let me, can I? What, sure. Beach renewment, what's the difference? Could you call, could you get a cost analysis? Yes, sir. And see what the difference, I mean, we need some. But I, I just want to know the difference between a beach renewment and a bridge. Well, th th there's not much difference when you look at it. The, one, one difference is this project would not be would not be designed to enhance property values specifically. It's designed and its limits are to protect that section of the road that we've already either washed out or will be washed out in the next hurricane. I mean, that's what this design is designed. And, and Mike Nebraska, I've had some preliminary conversations with him, is that he said you don't want too short of a space because if it's too short, the sand doesn't stay there. Mm -hmm. You have to have a large enough area that with a little bit of give or take, you don't expose the road to more damage. And that's why we would go from the west end of Chip Morrison where the beach sort of begins to build by itself coming back east to the beginning of Mud Cove where there isn't any erosion. And it's about a mile section there. Well, a mile bridge be about the same. Oh, a bridge. Oh, I'm sorry, a bridge, Commissioner. Uh, the problem is we can build a bridge, but guess what? We have to use all our own money to build a bridge. We get matching money to put sand out there. But well, you're going to put a toll on a bridge. Well, you might be able to test true. And, and admittedly, with a bridge, there is no maintenance cost. Like with yeah, but if you're going to let the whole alligator point cut in half, you just put a bridge up and just let the water go on. Yeah, you don't cut the alligator point, slam in half. That's the, that's the downside of that, yes. If you, yeah. put the, if you put the sand out there, then we're trying to stop alligator point from being cut in half. Right. Oh, yeah. but, but as y'all were talking this morning, you're talking about we're going to have to make up our own 12% now that the state's done what they've done. And what I'm understanding is if it gets washed out, FEMA's going to only reimburse you 50% of the cost to put it back. Oh, that's correct. So that's why you have the funding why source. We have, that's why you have what? A uh, funding source for maintenance. Yeah, you got to have right. that funding source yes. that you're talking about. Yes. But if we don't do something to protect that road, eventually it's going to be all washboard. Yes. Because this county does not have the money to. You, you see how the state's cutting back, and you see how the federal FEMA's cutting back. Sooner or later, all this is going to fall on Franklin County. Yes. And we don't have the money to keep building a million dollar road or. Three and a half million dollars, what you say in the permit. I mean, the PW's for it. Where will we get that kind of money if, if the state, the federal government keeps reneging on us and dumps it all in Franklin County's lap? Where will we get that? If we don't get a waiver this time for that, three you might have three or four storms in one year. Yes, sir. If we don't get a waiver this time, then you will be forced to use your entire ballpoint trust fund to fix it this one time, and then you will have no money for future. I'm repairs. saying we got to go ahead and, and do bite the bullet like everybody tells us. And go ahead and do something. Well, uh, I can't think of the gentleman's name out there. That should be. But this might be something you need to bring to your people down there. 
uh, what we're discussing here this morning because it's going to get to the point where this county cannot go down there. If FEMA drops back on us the way Alice telling us they are, yes, if the, fed, if the state government's going to drop back on us the way they are, now we don't even have no consultants to help us do the PWs to try to get any money out of FEMA. Yeah. And, and FEMA's going to cut back where they're only going to do the PWs at 50% if you can get one approved. For this beach region, well, well, I hope for the well. Let me let me explain. The PW is hopefully still be seventy five or eighty seven and a half percent. What what is but but what is the nice thing about beach renourishment is the initial cost the state of Florida pays half of. Right. That, that's the benefit of doing right. And we'll use restore funds right. to do the other right. half. Right. right. That's fine. Right. But then if it's ever washed out, then who's going to pay that local share? That's correct. That's why you need a fund because but, you know but FEMA's going not going to give us the money to replace that. Not They're going to give us fifty percent. They'll give us seventy five percent. 75%, but you got to have 25% right. coming right. coming from somewhere. Right. And even if a storm doesn't wash it out, we recognize there's an erosion problem down there. That's why it's washing away. And so even if there's not a storm, every eight years you're going to have to put some sand back anyway. That's why you need a maintenance fund. And you ain't going to get no female. And you get no female help in those cases. To replenish it right. a little here right. or there. Right, right. So well, what, what, what can we do to get a maintenance money? That's what we're well, go ahead and go spit, ahead it, and out, spit it out. Yeah, that's not <laughs> Well, he can oh, take it to his people when he goes to this meeting. Go you uh, make an assessment. You make an assessment on the for the on the property owners who are using the road. But it won't be as bad as it was the first time that we tried no. to do beach no. free nursery. And it's my estimation. Now, this is just me. We haven't talked to any specialists in uh, these uh, assessments. The assessment would be equal because everybody has access, equal access to the road. Before we had this complicated three-tier system, I would not propose that. I'd propose a single assessment for everybody who, uh, who needs to use that road. There's about, depending on whose number, uh, you need, uh, well, it really depends on how big your, how big your assessment area is. Uh, my, my initial review, and I have had Mike Madrasi work on some stuff for free, uh, that we would need to generate $2 million over an eight-year period as, as our maintenance fund. So that's uh, whatever I, what, that's five hundred thousand dollars. That's two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, um, and depending on how many participants are in that, you need to generate two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. If it's only five hundred participants, then that's five hundred dollar household set assessment. But if it's a thousand participants, well, now it's down to two hundred fifty, and it just depends on how big the surface area is that it can be justified. But you have had some comments from different people that they were willing to help share, cost share this thing. Yes. Yeah. I'm but not it's further away from the impacted area. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, it's not going to be. It, I mean, it's going. It's going to be. You know. I mean, I'll. But I mean, it's going to be washboard or no road before it's all over with if we don't take some kind of action. And the county is willing to take some yes. restore act dollars and put in there to get it done. But then there's the issue of, of maintaining that. Okay. And, yes, sir, and if you can't sustain it, then there's no sense putting no money out. Exactly. I understand that, and I agree with you. Sustainability is an issue. Uh, the worst thing we could do is spend money and not provide for maintenance of it in the long that, term. That's correct. That's correct. I agree, I agree with that. Yes. Well, what about? I, I'm just asking a question. Sure. I mean, I'm got to do something. But what about the people who use it don't feed it? That'd be gonna, well, how like how these people get, coming in on the weekend and going to the beach and all that. that. I, I wish I had an easy answer to that. I mean, yeah. uh, it ought to be some kind of way we can get the money through that rental stuff. That's it. Well, I, well, of course, any 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 house down there, any rental house is going to pay because they because they, they, they it's to be assessed per property. It's your day visitors who right now would be sliding sliding through free, and I I don't have an answer for that. But yeah, I, I really think we need to look at the options on this. I mean, I think there's opportunities, and you know, and, and the point you make, commissioners, I think a very good point, uh, and, and it's something that just needs looking at. We need to look at it if we're going to move I mean, forward. You know, yeah, but it's some kind of way we need to bring it money. to you. Taxpayer Association and who you represent? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, either we take steps while we have a few dollars in this restore uh, BP monies to help y'all get it done, right? Or we don't. Uh, but if we don't, I, I see bad things on the horizon. And you know, you can't just. I, I don't know. I'm kind of like point blank, but you know, if we don't do something now. It's gonna get worse and it's gonna get worse and it's gonna get worse and the funding sources are going away and it's gonna get worse and the county is not gonna have multi millions of dollars to to try to fix the road when it washes out, you know, and then everybody's gonna be complaining that not only is it 
Washboard, it ain't gonna be no road there. Yeah, washboard will be the least of the trouble. And we tried to give it to the state. They don't want it. They the ones that gave it to us. Again, with everything else coming down the legislature this year, uh, and we just don't have the resources to keep going. So we're gonna have to do something. Uh, I asked the question because I figured somebody from down there was going to hit the face. Right. It's going to do Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's right. And I just want him to kind of have some idea of what yeah. we're looking at so he can take it to his organization. Yeah, I'll be glad. I'll, I'll certainly bring it up. But they need to understand the importance of it ain't about $250 a year. It's about having a road up and down that where they can get back and forth to the marina and all. Because right. it just keeps. You know, a lot of times sand will get eat away, and then multi years later it's put back. What are you going to do in the meantime if it ever gets put back? I mean, Mother Nature has a way of removing it and putting it back over a period of years. But I've been meantime, I've been here twenty years. And ain't never Mother put Nature back. ain't never put it back there. <laughs> so I'm, I understand. I'm telling, it's, she always put it at the end down there toward the Phipps Preserve and all that. That's exactly and what happened. That's that thing. That's good. The lateral, lateral flow, they call it. But no, I agree, and I think Alan needs to go down there to the APTA meeting if Mr. Eddie doesn't have a problem. Better, better take law. And then, I mean, you know, <laughs> do you have a problem? I don't have a problem. My problem is when is the meeting? We have a meeting a week from this coming Saturday. I can make that on the 13th. You can make that one. Yeah. I'll be. I hope. To, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm supposed to be hiking to the north, of New Hampshire, and yeah, uh, in June. So I, I'll be here till so like 13th. May. When's it mean? May 21st. 13th. I'll be here. I'll be here. Okay. Mother's Day weekend. Yeah, 10 o'clock in the morning. If you can be there, we'll get you in early and get you out where you. <laughs> yeah, and you might get, be and carrying you, me out. I don't if know. you can, Alan, get some more numbers from Mike okay. Nebraska okay. and see what we can. Okay. Do it in that way, you can kind of inform them. Don't spend your whole day down there, but kind of inform them. Well, this is a preliminary deal, just to talk about. Yeah, you know. just preliminary. Yes. Just, just you know, and yes. kind of what, yeah. what the yeah. board's considering. And the just and let them know what's coming down the pike, because this is the only this is the only opportunity I see that we could possibly do a project like that. It is at the at having restore BP I funds, agree. whatever. And that has to be put in a multi-year invitation plan. So, yeah. so I'm sorry. That has to be put in the MYIP. A beach in order yeah, for that's, what's, that's what's driving this bus right now. That if we want to get money out of out of the Treasury in 2018, we need to submit a plan here in the next few months for yeah. them to review. And, that, and so this this project. If we has don't to be put it in the plan, then we can't get the funding for it. The county's part of the BP funds I'm talking about. Yes. That's the only funds we got available, and we're willing. To, I think the board has come to a consensus. We're willing to use some of that to try to help you folks, but. We got to have this maintenance money set aside too. Sustainability, or there ain't no sense in wasting the money. Got to have a fund. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Right. But if we don't put it in the plan, then we can't apply for the funding. Yes. So now we're going year after year without no protection down there. And Alan, let me ask a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on the multi-year implement, uh, implementation plan, is it a possibility? I just don't lost my train of thought too. I'll think about it.